this episode of Velocity Labs, New Daily Driver. All right, so I picked up this new daily driver for 350 bucks. The reason that I need it is because the Eclipse needs a new clutch, but I also need something to drive while I'm changing the clutch. So I need a daily. Normally, I would just drive the bug around, but that has a rod knock, so that's out of the picture. Just a quick backstory, I used to have a four-door Saturn for this very reason. I would drive that when the Eclipse would break, but I got rear-ended in that purple Saturn and the car was completely totaled. Don't text and drive. So I've been looking for a new one and last fall a 98 Saturn Coupe showed up on Craigslist for 300 bucks. Uh, the shift cables were broken and it had a bunch of other issues as well. Um, now I need a four door or a wagon, but I bought it anyway to flip it. So I fixed everything that was wrong with it, cleaned it up and sold it. And then I started my search for a wagon. It had to be 1996 or newer with a manual transmission with traction control and anti-lock brakes. Those last two are actually pretty rare in Saturns, and I need those for the snow. Finally, I found one listed on Craigslist for 800 bucks with no picture. So I sent a couple emails, made sure that it hadn't been smoked in, which is uh, my number one priority. Asked a couple other questions, but I wasn't really getting a straight answer. Um, but I thought, what the heck, let's go check it out. So I get down there, go to start it, and uh, it just clicks, doesn't start at all. I'm like, well, I got jumper cables, so I hook jumper cables up to it, starts turning over, but it won't start. It's just cranking and cranking for like two and three minutes trying to get this thing started. So I asked the lady, I'm like, does it normally start? And she's, she's kind of nervous. And she's like, yeah, yeah, normally it starts. I'm like, mm, okay. Uh, and I'm noticing the coolant temp gauge is kind of like flickering really oddly while I'm trying to start it. And I'm like, oh, this is a bad coolant temp sensor, 100%. Um, so I keep trying to get it started and it fires once, but it didn't stay running. And uh, I'm like, hey, this has got a bunch of check engine codes on it. I'm gonna go grab my reader um, and come back. So I did that, I came back and she's like, do you wanna keep trying to start it? I'm like, yeah, I'd, I'd really like to hear it run. And uh, she's like, I gotta go inside, uh, just text me when, when, if you get it running. I'm like, okay. Um, so she goes inside and uh, I take the intake temperature sensor, which is the same as the coolant temp sensor, plug it into the coolant temp sensor spot, car fires right up. Uh, it doesn't stay running very well, but it, it starts every time. So I swap it back and uh, I text her. She comes back outside and uh, I'm like, yeah, I can kind of get it to fire, but um, there's a bunch of check engine codes on it. Uh, the windows don't work, bunch of other stuff. And uh, so I'm like, would you take 300 cash for it? And she's like, mm, I take 350 and I was like, sold. So I bought the car, ran to the auto parts store, got a coolant temp sensor, slapped that in there and drove it home. All right, so we got this thing back in the garage and it's time to make a list. Priority number one is getting this thing registered, which I can't do without getting nocturnal emissions done first. No wait, regular emissions done first, which means it can't have a check engine light or it will fail. And it currently has a check engine light with three codes, P0500, which is the vehicle speed sensor, and P0405 and P1404, which are a faulty EGR valve. I cleared the codes and the speed sensor malfunction stayed off, so that might be fine, but the EGR codes came back right away, so we actually need to fix those. Oh, and I'm using this little $10 Bluetooth engine code reader that I got on Amazon. It's linked in the description, and if you buy it through that link, I'll get like five cents from Amazon. Anyway, let's clean the EGR. Removing it is just a couple bolts, and if you're looking for instructions on how to do this, check out the videos by Richpin. He does amazing Saturn repair videos. I learned everything I know about Saturns from watching that guy. He's the best. The link to his channel is in the description of this video as well. So yeah, that is super gummed up, and this little pendle doesn't even move, so that's our problem. We just need to clean this. All right, so we're about halfway through cleaning this, and already it's way better. Before, I couldn't even get this to move. If I could get it to move, it would just get stuck. This is the, the pindle. And uh, now it's got really good action. It's moving back and forth. You can see in there, uh, I got a lat pretty clean. I'm gonna keep working on it. It's still got a bit of gunk. I could probably slap it on as is and uh, it'd be done, but I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, get it really clean. And we'll, uh, uh, we're also gonna start the car and run it without it on. Uh, it kicks out some of that carbon. I'm gonna clean up some of the throttle body and then we'll see foam this guy. All right, got this guy clean. It's not perfect, but it's pretty darn good. Check out the action on that pindle. Oh yeah. Like I said, it's not perfect, but uh, like my buddy Scott from Barbecue and Bolt says, it's good enough. Good, good enough.
<laughs> we got the EGR cleaned and we also did a quick throttle body cleaning as well. Now the fun part, I'm actually gonna start this thing up without the EGR on. Oh, that smells bad. And thank goodness for the heater. Because we are snowing out here. All right, time to shut the garage door. Cleaning the EGR should fix our codes, so let's clear them again and see if they come back. And we're gonna go ahead and drive to Walmart, get a bottle of seafoam, because we are gonna seafoam this bad boy uh, probably three times, because I'm sure it's gonna be pretty gunked up. So let's go ahead and clear it. Uh, fault codes. So when I clear the codes, you'll see that the uh, the light turns off. Faults, yes. Okay, I might have covered that. <laughs> so check engine light is off. Let's go ahead and drive to Walmart. Just cruising through the snow. Definitely taking her slow. The, uh, the traction control and the analog brakes on these cars are excellent. I've already used them both. Uh, just about slid through a stop sign, but I was able to uh, come to a stop thanks to the ABS. This is coming from a guy that drives an all-wheel drive Eclipse without analog brakes, by the way. So analog brakes are kind of like a novelty to me. I'm like, wow, I can still steer when I'm braking. This is great. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're just about to Walmart. Uh, traction control gets me moving fine. ABS is letting me stop fine. So just about there. Oh, and uh, no check engine light yet, so that's good. I got to Walmart, got my seafoam, found an empty parking lot in the cold snow, and seafoamed the car a couple times, letting the seafoam sit for like 15 to 20 minutes each time. I got the awesome smoke show, then I drove it around for a bit just to make sure the check engine light stayed off, and it did, so then we had a little fun in the snow. So I gotta show you guys this ridiculousness. Sea foaming went great, but uh, I'm having way too much fun out here in the snow, so we're gonna go uh, mess around on some of these streets. And uh, I grabbed my tripod. Oh, we're not gonna be able to see this at all. <laughs> and I have it uh, tied to the back headrest with some garbage bags and then buckled in. You can't see it because it's so dark. But uh, we'll see if we can get any decent footage, so here we go. Oh, that's a good one. See how long I can hold the drift for. Shit, lost it. <laughs> U turn. <laughs> Nailed it. Oh, that's a good one. All right, and we're back home. And no check engine light. So tomorrow, we are going to get emissions done. All right, on our way to get emissions. Gonna get some gas first. All right, so good news. Emissions passed with flying colors, so we're good to go there. I'll be getting the car registered tomorrow. We're gonna be able to drive it legally. So it's insured. Uh, emissions is done, gonna be registered. So now we need to start fixing everything else. So we're gonna cross that off as done. Registration, emissions testing, and we fixed all the check engine lights. Turns out we didn't need the vehicle speed sensor at all. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and return that. I'll probably just exchange it for a valve cover gasket because we need a valve cover gasket as well. Uh, before I do anything though, uh, there's a bunch of stuff that needs to get done. We are going to Aha, that's a pun. We're going to, get it? Compression test. I kind of want to know the health of this motor. It does have, you know, 220,000 miles on it, something like that. It's a high mileage motor, so I want to make sure that it's in decent shape before I start putting a bunch of work into it to make it perfect. 
because uh, if I mean if one cylinder's dead or it's really bad, uh, I can just swap a different motor in it. If we do, I'm doing a Honda motor. Let's compression test it right now and uh, and see where we're at. I'll write the, uh, the results there. So this is pretty easy. What we're gonna do is uh, just screw this little doohickey down into the uh, into the cylinders. Turn the engine over a bunch of times. And uh, to do that, we're gonna take out the uh, injector relay or, or injector fuse, and that'll keep the, uh, the engine from starting. All right, injector fuse is out, and uh, we'll just start, I guess we'll start on, uh, on that end over there. That is 160 on the dot. Okay, number two. Oh man, that's good news. We're dead on 160 again. Exactly the same as the other one. So that's good news. Okay, that one's a little higher. 170 on this one, that's fine. Looks like 165, that is beautiful. 165, really couldn't ask for better than that. That's a happy face. All right, so I am super happy with those results. Now, you might be wondering, why are you happy the minimum should be 180 on a, uh, on a Saturn SL2 or SW2 motor? Well, a couple things. I did the test cold. Um, warmer tests, if the, the engine was warm, it would have gotten better results. I like doing it cold though, because it's an aluminum head. I don't like pulling spark plugs out of a hot engine with an aluminum head, called me crazy. Um, so I just did it cold, I was more comfortable with that. And I am at 5,500 feet elevation. Uh, so there's a correction factor to that, which is 0.86. So uh, calculating in the correction factor, uh, the 160s go to 183. The 170 goes up to 194. The 165 goes to 188. So. Even at elevation, at 5,500 feet, I'm still hitting that minimum at 180. And, uh, and they're all really close. Um, this engine's perfectly healthy, especially for having 240 some odd thousand miles on it. I, did I say 220? I might've said 220 earlier. Let's check. Okay, so it is, it's, uh, it's 226,000 miles. So yeah, high mileage engine, compression looks great. I'm super happy with that. So we get to go in and, uh, and start fixing and doing a bunch of maintenance on this thing, get it ready to rock. Um, but yeah, I'm super happy with it. This thing's gonna go another 100,000 miles easy if I take care of it. So, um, fun stuff. Let's go ahead and get rid of all this boring math and we'll go over what our next steps are gonna be. First things, um, it's cold out and the windows don't roll up. Uh, there's a little plastic clip that, uh, that breaks in Saturn's uh, for the window regulator. Uh, I ordered four new ones, but we're gonna fix those as soon as they come in. So we're gonna go number one, fix windows, because it's cold out. Uh, number two, uh, new speakers. And we're probably actually gonna do that right now because I already ordered them. All four of the speakers are blown, uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and replace them. Upper motor mount. So the motor mounts on Saturns, particularly the top one, are known for going bad. They just uh, they just totally collapse, and then the whole car just shakes and rattles when it. So I ordered a new one on Amazon. That's here already. So upper motor mount. Funny thing about the uh, funny thing about the upper motor mount is it was already done back in 2010. This thing has pretty good service records in it. And, um, but in 2010, they just used the same style that it originally came with, and that has ended up collapsing as well. So the new ones I got are a lot stronger, and uh, it should hold up fine, especially for how long I'm gonna have this car, which is probably you know only two or three years. Uh, maybe longer than that, we'll see. So upper motor mount, we need to clean the engine bay up. I just wash, oh, well, deep clean. We'll just put that as a, as a whole thing. 
So we need to deep clean both the interior and the exterior. I'm talking full on cleaning. Take the seats out, probably take the carpet out and pressure wash that. Really get the interior cleaned up. I think that's, uh, that's gonna be good enough to start with here. Let's go ahead and tackle those ones. Oh, the, uh, the deep clean, probably not gonna do that until it warms up because it's, uh, it's below freezing now. Uh, and I don't want to do that when it's freezing out, so that'll wait. Uh, speakers though, let's go ahead and do those. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the parts we got. So new speakers, there's six and a half, all four of them. There's two in the front doors and then two in the rear hatch. Uh, so we're gonna replace both of those. These are uh, $11 speakers, but uh, they sound great for what they are. Here's the motor mount, and um, I'll show you the difference when we do this uh, between this style and the old one, but, uh, but these work great. That should clear up any rattles. And uh, I'll show you the window problem as well. So this one just slides down. Um, both the rear ones do actually, and they don't, uh, they don't roll it up at all. You have to just lift them up um, because those plastic clips are broken. Now to fix that, we actually have to take the outer door skin off uh, to get those clips in there. The motors also don't work great, so I'm gonna um, look and see how much new ones are, or we might just try cleaning the motors and see if that helps because they're a little slow and we'll show you the other side as well and this is super common with uh saturn sls and sws uh same thing on this one won't stay up even when i just hit bumps it just creeps down which is uh which is no good so those parts aren't here yet uh probably be a week on those um yeah let's go ahead and start with speakers all right, and uh, I'm not going to show you guys how to do this. There's already excellent tutorial videos on the, on the Saturn S series online. Rich Pin's videos in particular are amazing. He's taught me how to do everything on these Saturn. So if you look up Rich Pin on YouTube, uh, he'll show you how to do the motor mounts, show you how to clean the EGR, which I did. Um, all of those I'm following his videos and, and other videos on YouTube as well. So if you're looking for tutorials on how to do this, uh, check out Rich Pin and other guys. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and pop these in. We'll show you uh, a couple clips once they're in and uh, we'll go from there. So, here's what these speakers look like. Uh, they're three-way, not a paper core. Uh, they say 300 watts, I kinda doubt that. But uh, yeah, they sound great, especially for $11, you can't go wrong. Uh, they do have the grill covers. I'm not gonna be needing these, so those are garbage. Throw it on the ground. So, I'm gonna go ahead and pop these in. Oh, and real quick, there's one more thing that we definitely need to do. And that is find a replacement door handle because this guy is broken. I pull on it and it's just, you can see it's all cracked and, and broken in there. So we need one of those. So we're gonna be going back to the junkyard. Uh, the junkyard that just dropped my motor, if you saw my last video, is having a sale on Saturday and Sunday for $10 wheel and tires. Uh, so I'm definitely gonna go Saturday morning again and look for a set of wheels and tires. Maybe for this, maybe for the Eclipse. Maybe for the bug, who knows? But $10 wheel and tire combo, uh, I can't pass up. Gonna add the, the door handle on this list. So actually the, uh, the whole door card itself is broken. Like this whole piece is busted. So gonna need uh, the entire door card. Uh, and somebody tried to epoxy this screw, so I don't know how I'm gonna get that out. But uh, I guess we'll just start with the door card and uh, look for a new one at the junkyard. Salvage yard, sorry, Laura. All right, so I got this wired up and the one tip that I will give is put some foam uh, around the outer edge, maybe styrofoam. I have a bunch of uh, this insulation type foam and uh, that's gonna go all the way around this inside edge and I'll show you what that looks like. Uh, because this is metal, the back of the speaker is metal. Once you get it in there, it can tend to rattle uh, if you don't have any insulation there. So put a layer around it um, or just a bunch of little pieces around it. It'll make a, uh, a big difference on your sound. That looks pretty good. You'll just have to pretend to be hearing music here because I can't put you anything copyrighted. Sounds great though. All right, that's uh, one down, four to go. I'm not gonna, I'll just show the end product and the last ones. Because uh, like I said, there's plenty of tutorials on how to do this. And I'm going to leave the door panel off. Because like I said, it is broken anyway. So I'm going to get uh, a new one from the salvage yard. All right, so I was just noticing that this little cup that came on this factory speaker actually fits this one fine. So I'm wondering if I should pull that guy out, put the cup back in, this plastic cup. 
I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Why not? A little extra insulation never hurt. Uh, this still feels pretty soft. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and use these because uh, they seem to fit. Or is this just gonna make it rattle more? I mean, you know what? No, I'm not. Uh, I'm gonna leave these off because I bet these just rattle. Screw these things, throw it on the ground. All right, got this door done and back together without breaking it, so that's cool. Uh, this door card's actually nice and clean. And I think if we get in here, you can actually even see the speaker behind there, which looks pretty cool. But uh, yeah, got them in, test them out, they sound great. And here's the back on this thing. The rear two speakers are up here on the inside of the hatch. All right, so same thing here done on the back as the front. Once you get everything wired up, a nice layer of styrofoam all the way around there uh, really helps seal that up and eliminate any rattles. Okay, back at the salvage yard to find a door card. And back at the scene of the crime from my last video. Not that I'm bitter or anything, Oh, and check this out, Performance Saturn. Got a hot air intake, strut bar, the whole works. All right, here's our winner. It's a 97 SL1. Luckily, it's got power locks, so it's the right type of door. Uh, power locks and power windows, right? Did I miss that? Yeah, so it's got power locks. It's not in fantastic shape, but it's better than what I got. Uh, Non-smoking car and power windows, which is good. Um, that means it'll work. Everything's the same. Gonna need to get cleaned up a little bit, but it doesn't look broken. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this guy off and uh, get it out. And then we're gonna look for some wheels because wheels are only $10 today. Oh, and I didn't get any wheels or tires for the sale that was going on. I got to the salvage yard at like 11 a.m. and it was completely picked clean. I saw several trucks loaded to the gills with wheels and tires driving out of there. Oh well, maybe next time. Oh, and check out this super clean Nissan that was there. Whosever car this is, amazing work. This thing is gorgeous. All right, back from the salvage yard with the new door card. It needs a good cleaning and then we can pop it back in. Now, it's not the same color, but I did find out from the people at the SaturnFans.com forums that the door cards all the way through 2002 should work. So I'll keep an eye out for a matching one. If I can't find one, I might try painting all the door cards black or dark gray to match the dash. Anyway, last thing for this video is just to swap the upper motor mount out. Again, if you want detailed instructions on how to do this, check out Richpin's videos, he's the best. It's just completely shot. Like this is just total flop fest. It's coming apart right now. Uh, compared to the new one, you'll see there's no gap up at the top. Uh, this one should be much better. And this is gonna take care of all our rattles. All right, got this thing washed up, the engine bay cleaned up, all the rattles are gone from the motor mount, and, uh, and so this thing is coming along nicely. We paid $350 for the car, we have spent $12 on a new coolant temp sensor, $22 on speakers, $16 on a new motor mount, $17 on a new inner door card, $6 on seafoam, so we're at a total of $423. And it's looking awesome. I still have a bunch more that I wanna do to it though, like fix the windows, tint the windows, put a roof rack on it, put an intake on it, put some fog lights on it, and a bunch of other cool stuff. So uh, stay tuned for part two.